was fortunate enough to be chairman of the system on its 75th anniversary. And so as a steward of something that has that sort of vintage, the first obligation is to do no harm. And once I understood that our mission is to provide a secure retirement to our members and to actually implement and use our funding in the most efficient fashion, I think the mission was clear, which is to eliminate inefficiencies in the system, to improve our operating structure, to seek out new investment opportunities, and to ensure that no stone was left unturned to make sure that we produced the best risk-adjusted returns, to ensure that we used our state funding and our members' contributions most efficiently, and to make sure that our members slept very, very soundly, knowing that they were going to have a living retirement and a secure retirement. I think if we looked at it specifically, and one of the things that I'm proudest with is one of our innovations has been in the emerging manager space. And we believed that that was consistent with leaving no stone unturned to find the best risk-adjusted returns. We have found that emerging managers produce a superior risk-adjusted return, and we find that many of them grow to be larger managers while still being um, grateful, for lack of a better term, for our role in getting them launched. So we think it's a win-win scenario. So it achieves superior returns, it harvests untapped talent, and it results in a better outcome and a safer retirement for our members. We have a fiduciary obligation to achieve the best risk-adjusted returns that support our members and protect the fund or the trust. And when something pays you more with less risk, it seems obvious that you should do it until it gets to a place where it either pays you less or pays you less on a risk-adjusted basis, and we're far from being there.